Pochettino is not elite, at least oh not God. yet. Oh, God. Um, Chelsea fans don't like to hear that. No, nah, I think that's the fact. I mean, when if we you call, take when, Tottenham Hotspur to the Champions League final and win it the league make, it with make, Paris Saint-Germain... It doesn't make you elite. Um, I mean, it's like giving you win the league with, with Paris Saint-Germain, but it takes Spurs to, to a Champions League final once. It doesn't make you elite. I mean, when we speak about the elite managers, we are talking about Jose Mourinho, Pep Guardiola, Carlo Ancelotti. You know, do we put Pochettino Klopp? Do we put Pochettino in that bracket? I don't think. I think he's he's right beneath there. He's, he's yeah. not in the in that category. But, but also, he's still it's a very fair good manager. For us to say there are probably more elite clubs than elite managers. Absolutely, that is why a lot of so the big clubs are struggling for for that. So yeah, and, and he's he's by no means a bad manager. I think he's a very talented coach. He has a very brilliant brand of football. Speaking of which, uh, and the numbers are speaking for itself. The fifty-one point five six win percentage when it comes to that he's coached in the like, Premier League. In the Premier League, when it comes for to that both thing. and then Spurs. Yes. These are two teams that do not, before him and his reign at Southampton, they were not winning the numbers, the number of games that they were winning. And with Spurs, we saw what he did at Spurs. Yeah. And now he's come to Chelsea. So he's got a track record in the Premier League. And like I said, he plays some exciting brand of football. He loves the young players. He wants them to be play with a lot of pace, a lot of tenacity. But then you mentioned something that he's coming to work under two sporting directors or football directors. We know for sure that when he was at Spurs, that was one of the things he kicked against. And if you remember, during his time at Spurs, he didn't have any of that. It was only after him that Daniel Levy brought in Paratici, who is now having his own problem. Before, yeah. when, when Pochettino was there, he clearly did say he didn't want that, that level above him. But Chelsea now he's got to work with two. One of the problems, again, he faced at Paris Saint-Germain was because he had to work with Leonardo. And a lot of the decisions were not run by him. Yeah. You know, Messi came into the club, he was giving the notice, but it wasn't necessarily his call. Some players left, some players came, not necessarily his call. At Chelsea, you have a feeling that maybe that it's going to be more of... I'm not too worried about a coach and a manager. Yeah, a manager has a bigger... I mean control, control because it goes down to how the youth sides play depending upon how he wants to train his side but with Chelsea now he's going to be the coach for the main team I think that is where the club wants to focus they want him to focus his energy there while they build structures around him that's my if, question yeah what are his immediate task you think what must he sort out like immediately he walks in on the 1st of July what must he rectify at that club to begin with, he, at the very least, he has to train the squad. And I'm sure by now he's given the list to the owners or the his sporting directors above him that these are the players I can work with, these are the players I want to bring in, these are the players I want to ship out. Because we've said it here before, I think, and everybody, everyone else who knows enough about football has said that it's practically impossible yeah. for any manager to be successful with the squad number that Chelsea have got. Mm -hmm. And I think Paul should be looking at that situation and be thinking that he needs to train the squad. However, they are still places in that Chelsea team that he has to fix. They need to bring in a, a goal scorer, a striker. They probably need to bring in a defensive midfielder and maybe another centre and a goalkeeper as well, another centre back and a goalkeeper as well. So they spend 600 million, but they are still holes in that team that Pochettino has to fill and plug. Daniel, um, your thoughts on the Pochettino appointment? Obviously, there were actually rumours that Spurs wanted him back. Um, mm -hmm. He's made the decision, obviously, to go to Chelsea. Uh, he knows the league, obviously, having spent so many, I think, a combined, what, eight years with Southampton and Spurs. Chelsea is a completely different animal compared to those previous uh, two teams that he's managed. What is it that you foresee could be one of his biggest challenges coming back to the Premier League after maybe three years away? There's a lack of control because if you've looked at his successes in the Premier League with Tottenham and, and, and uh, Southampton. Southampton, he had that level of control. And it's, it's very important. You might, when you say control, you're talking about a, a coach who has a, a philosophy. And in order for that philosophy to work, he needs certain elements to be in place. And if he doesn't have control over the elements who are coming in and those who are going out, it can, it can be a huge problem. The good thing about Poch is that we've also seen him being able to adapt to the materials that he has. Yeah. We mentioned the PhD. Uh, his, his time at PSG. I, th I think he did good. Yes, he, I don't think he won in the first season. He didn't. He lost the league title to Leo. Yeah. Then he came back. He won the league title. And that Champions League run that ended up with uh, PSG losing to Real Madrid. When you analyze that game in... in Individual mistakes. It, it was not a tactical defeat. Yeah. It was down to a, a mentality issue. And that is more of PSG as a club than Pochettino <laughs> as, as, a, man. as a manager. So you could clearly tell that he's, and he's, look, he has some 
It's always important for managers like this, when you look at one or two moments in their careers, when they've come up against the best, the ability to hold their ground. He's done it to Pep Guardiola, he's done it to um, Conte, he's done it to Klopp. He's, he, he knows how to hold. He has so. beaten all of yeah, these managers look, yeah, exactly. with Spurs. He has, he has beaten them. And for, for, for Chelsea, they'll be looking at, at that and seeing it as a plus. And you see, when you, you've gone from Potter to Lampard, and now you've got Poch. It's a clear upgrade. You can't but lie to yourself and say yeah. it's, it's a clear upgrade. And Poch in the Premier League was certainly one of the best. The only thing was that he hasn't won. But I always say that, look, winning is a very important thing. And for yeah. me, being able to go through that culture with PSG to win, I think he came back and he won the Super Cup. So he, he's come back to the Premier League. He's coming back to the Premier League, a different person than he left. We know his tactical knows what it feels like to he win. He knows how, what it feels like to win. I'm not saying he's going to retain Chelsea to the very top in the first season, no. But it's, a, it's clearly a step in the, in the right direction. But that aspect of control is extremely important. And I'm wondering why there are two sporting directors. Yeah. Because one is already sort of difficult for these top managers to work with. But two is also um, kind of problematic considering what Chelsea have done in the past six months. You're talking about 600 million. And what you just said is, is, is a huge indictment on the business Chelsea have done. You can't spend 600 million and still have clear gaping holes in the team. Yeah. And the striker aspect, they don't need one striker. They need at least two. If you want to compete for the top four, you need at least two strikers on there. Uh, one top striker and one good striker who can come in and deputize. You're looking at your defensive... There are so many problems that Chelsea yeah. need to fix. And the fact that they need to go out and go and spend... A huge amount of money. Because now, if you want a striker, you're looking at 150 million. Yeah, you yeah. And it looks like to me, it, it at least if I'm not mistaken, at least six or seven top teams in Europe all need strikers this summer. Mm -hmm. they do. Liverpool need a striker. Yeah, Man United, United need a striker. Bayern yeah. uh, need, need a striker. Bayern. Um, even Barca need a striker. They yeah. need to be preparing for Life even after exactly. Yeah. Um, even Real, Real Madrid need yeah, to be yeah, preparing for Benzema. Yeah. They need a striker. So it looks like and the list, the list of top quality strikers are not that long. That's what I mean. It's, That's it's not why that long. So it means or see, it's, it's going to be our time. And the fact that again. Chelsea are without Champions League football. You wonder if that plays into the decision making of certain players. Yeah, but they want to yeah. play, go into Chelsea where other teams will be offering Champions League football more bonuses, more it's opportunities more to win the Champions League. Uh, absolutely. So it's, it's, Pochettino is coming into a very difficult job. But as Danny said, he has what it takes to adapt to several other players. For Chelsea, yeah, they might have to spend a lot of money, but they've got also players who they can sell. True. If they want to move on, a player like Macy Mount, we are hearing in a region of 17 million. They've got Christian Pulisic, Akin Ziyech. They can rake in some fans yeah. from these players while they trim the squad and maybe reinvest it in 